on the road. We're live in Atlanta right now at the Sweetwater Brewery with the band Waker. Guys, hey. thank you very yo, much yo. for being here, man. Yeah. Thanks We're for live. having us. We're glad to be here. Yeah, dude, you're making uh, making sounds in this room and making this room sound the way that it's supposed to. It's this <laughs> re re echoing canyon of, uh, of, of sound that's happening right now, and you're about to play four songs right now. All of them are off the debut record, Fresh Out. Can you talk to us a little bit about what's coming up first? Yeah, so this first song is called Waiting On You. It was the first single that we put out for the record Fresh Out. Um, we've got a music video online, and I think it uh, is a good depiction of what the band both feels like on, in the studio and then also live. It feels very full, very exciting, and so uh, I think it's a perfect room for us to play this song. The sun on your shoulders You can feel me there Oh, nothing lasts forever And I know you're scared To set you on your way extra long before the applause the decay is just like a seven second decay in this room or something like that <laughs> it sounds tremendous man thank you uh cheers to you guys dude this is cheers. a lot of fun hey, thanks man cheers um, yeah thank you for uh for permission to start drinking alcohol before noon i appreciate yes, that very no much problem. cheers to sweet water <laughs> man so um collaboration is an important part of every creative endeavor i mean these guys have done it with um with Riff, between Sweetwater and Riff, you guys do it. You guys did it with Lincoln Parish. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a backbone of being able to do anything creatively. Can you talk a little bit about what that relationship looks like between you and Lincoln when you guys get together to create? Yeah, um, Lincoln, I think, was the first producer that we had worked with where it felt like 
he just wanted to capture us. It wasn't about like trying to change us or, or anything other than just like get us in a room. Don't try to like overthink it because all of us come from a background of playing music for a long time. So all the analytical, like, am I playing this part right? What's the right note? Like, and that's good. Like, oh, that's really good. But I think Lincoln challenged us in a way to just get in the room again and, and just make music in the way that we feels right without thinking too much about it. Um, cause it's all rehearsed, it's all ready to go, but he just got us in a space of like, don't try to judge it too hard. Like, does it feel right? And that was really important for us, especially on a debut where we've been writing a lot of these songs for many years. So you overthink it constantly. Um, so that collaborative aspect was huge for us, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I am not personally a studio musician or a touring musician, but I can't imagine, um, not from personal experience, but I can imagine that, I mean, takes start to lose things after you've done it four or five times. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, dude, this feels mechanical. It sucks. I don't feel anything about this. But, you know, the first first time, maybe not the best, but the second time and the third time, it's like, that's, I would imagine, where it's at. Yeah. Um, do you guys record in the studio? Are you literally all in a room together? Or do you do ISO stuff? Are you guys in booths and playing at the same time? Or are you literally in a room doing the thing together? Um, for the most part, it was like the rhythm section, like guitar, drums, bass, um, and then with like a scratch vocal, like live, and then kind of build from there. I think when we go into the next record, it'll be more of like that hybrid approach of like kind of building things and creating more of a sonic thing in the studio. But for this first record, it was definitely about capturing as much of the energy live and then building on top of that. Um, cool. And well, I think that you guys have done a wonderful job of it. It's, it sounds great here in this room, and we're about to hear a lot more, man. What do you guys feel like doing second off of uh, Fresh um, Out? This next song is a song called Already on the Ground. Um, it was one that we played on the road for a bit before we recorded it, and that definitely helped us figure out like the real balance of it. So we love this song.
Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Wow. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Man, um, so I know the musical partnership uh, for at least some of this band goes back a really, really long time. Um, can you talk about some of the musical artists that were important to you that sort of informed a common musical vocabulary for you guys coming up from the fifth grade until now? Yeah. Uh, well, Connor and I met in Denver when we were in fifth grade, and um, I think both of us early on, it was like the Beatles and the Allman Brothers and... Um, you know, Otis Redding and stuff like that, that we kind of shared love over, like, you know, Led Zeppelin, everybody that's a musician at that age, um, led us to Nashville, and then everybody else we met through going to Belmont University. Um, so Dave is a very big Genesis fan. Um, Ryan's big with a lot of, like, whether it's Yes or, or other prog bands, as is uh, Ryan Ladd, our bass player, and then Alex brings the, the beautiful sax sound to the band. So, like, there's a shared interest of a lot of different genres of music. So I think the fun part was, and, and it's fun every day, is figuring out how do we fit it all together and keep challenging ourselves. And Alex is a huge Kenny G fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a mic to the phone. <laughs> you could scream into that 57 and we probably hear you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think it's it's pretty natural. Like none of us have ever. I, I think we're constantly sharing music, and so we're always learning new stuff. We're always on on uh, on the radar of of you know what what can we learn from, and what what's what's something that we're learning from right now that somebody else might get something out of too. Nice. How about um, upcoming shows of other bands that you're going to just as a fan? Do you have are there are there shows on the horizon that you're particularly looking forward to right now? Um, I mean, the other day, McLean and I saw that uh, we love this band called The Dip, and they're based out of Seattle. It's like a super cool horn-based band. They're playing at the Brooklyn Bowl in Nashville coming up in the spring, and um, we just saw Talk, um, which yeah. is a band that we opened up for in Birmingham. Mom uh, Talk, fellas. New friends of ours, and they were just playing at the Basement East, so we went through and saw their show there. So it's just con it's constant. I love living in Nashville for that reason. You know, you guys were talking about going to Jan's, Jan's place, and it's like, yeah. I remember seeing him play with Soul Cat back in the day. And yeah. So it's, it's, it's very collaborative. It's very connective in that way. Jan may very well be watching this right now. I'm I glad love to, it. I love that reference. <laughs> What's man. up, well, Jan? Yeah, dude, we have a wonderful, wonderful time every time we're in Nashville. The community feels very welcome. It's yeah. nice to be able to see a rock and roll concert and a baseball game at the same time there at the Brooklyn exactly. Bowl. It's uh, yeah. pretty fun. Um, man, thank you again for doing this. And we're yeah. only halfway through right now. There's still two more songs coming up off of Fresh Out. What are you guys going to do third today? Um, this next song is called Loving Heart. Um, kind of like 50s doo-wop inspired in a way, I guess. But... Um, yeah, we love this one too. This is this one I think is more we love the studio recording of it, but it's but it's become one of our favorites to play live. Yeah.
Thank you guys, and thank you audience, man. It's easy for us to sound like we are more people than we are in this cavernous space. <laughs> yes, Four of us true. sound like eight. Um, so when you guys are listening to music as fans, passing things around as, as reference for the band, um, what, does the, what does the creative process look like for you guys in terms of where the songwriting happens, who the songwriting comes from? Is it like a group effort, everybody sitting down, or do individuals bring, bring material to the table, or how does it work for you guys? Um, definitely very collaborative um, in the sense of like the song I always feel like I, I talk about how the song the bones like the chords and, and a lot of the lyrics usually start with myself and, and Connor um, but I mean the songs would never be what they are without everybody like that's we might work on getting that that structure and then when we bring it together as a band it's like it just comes out as a whole another thing because of that um, so I think as we move into this next period of writing new music, it's it's figuring out how to how to reevaluate that and like you know try things differently and, and see how we progress in, in that way. Because we've written a couple of songs on the on Fresh Out, like This Is Not Goodbye, we wrote as a group, and it was a cool experience of like starting from a riff that Connor had, had from a really long time ago, but it just had never really been finished. And so we put all of us in a room. It, it happened pretty quickly, pretty naturally. So, like, that's a great experience of, like, hey, maybe we should try that again, you know, and, and see where I think we're just always chasing the song in that sense. So. Yeah. Does it tend to, do you guys tend to amplify chasing the song with an adult beverage or any other sort <laughs> of adult smokable or whatever? Um, does it, do you guys tend to, does it tend to be a hang like that? Or is it, like, very, very focused on the music? Or is it a mixed bag? Or how does that, that side of it tend to work for you guys? Um, I, I think there's a good quote that, like, it's a Leonard Cohen quote where it's, like, you can wait around for inspiration to, to come or really he, he was like a believer and a lot of really great songwriters are believers and you go to work nine to five. So like there's a there's definitely a big strong emphasis on getting together regularly and like making a habit of, of it so that when you're exercising that muscle, when that inspiration and when that hang is, is around, it's like you've got the tools because I, you know, I think. Maybe maybe most of our songs have been written with a with a Sweetwater 420 in our hand. You know, it's like <laughs> there's definitely an aspect of like you got it's got to be fun, right? Like that's why we do this. But at the same time, if you're not exercising that muscle, you're not really ready for that inspiration when it when it does come around. You might just get lucky, but how many times can you keep getting lucky? You really have to progress and get better at it. So. Awesome. That's very well put, man. I'm glad I asked that question. I'm glad you answered it that way. That is, that's perfect, dude. That's one of the one of the most eloquent answers to that question I've ever Thanks, heard. Thanks, man. So, yeah, yeah, man. Um, so there is the the closer, which is the closer of this session. It's the closer of the album. It was mm -hmm. the last song that was written and recorded for the album. What is it about the next song that you're about to play that makes it the appropriate closure for uh, for Fresh Out? Um, it felt like the song that said everything that the record, like it, it kind of the whole message of the song is like you can't process the things that you've been through until you're done with them when you're far enough away from them to really know what you've just experienced. And so that's the whole chorus, the whole like refrain is like far outside the frame. And I think it's why people go to art museums. You, you look at it from close up, then you move a little bit further back, you move a little bit further back, you see something different. Um, so it felt like the perfect song to have as the last song on the record. And um, Connor plays an amazing solo on it live, and we oh. kind of stretch it out, and it becomes a, it's, it becomes a new thing when we do it live. But on the record, I think it's a great way to just end that chapter and, and move forward, and but appreciate it at the same time. So nice, awesome. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, this is called Small Song. If it gets too heavy, take it off your back And when you're feeling ready, bring 
Waiting on your attack These days they may change But we will watch them go When you're feeling ready We can start the show Nothing lasts forever Oh, nothing stays the same But the view is always better From far outside the frame
Hey! Yes. Thank you guys. Well done, Connor. Well thank done, you. everybody. Thank man, you so that much, was man. a lot of fun. Uh, thank you for kicking off this uh, Sweetwater Brewery series the right way, man. I feel good. I feel ready for. We've been doing 15 of these in the next three Amazing. days. Amazing. You guys and, are champs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you guys are very busy as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the Talkbox Radio Showcase tomorrow night in Nashville? Yeah. Um, so, our producer, Lincoln Parrish, is throwing a show tomorrow night at the basement, the OG basement. Um, and it's basically just his way of uh, throwing a, a show of artists that he's produced that he's had a, a good time working with. And so we're really grateful to be the headliner for that show tomorrow night. Um, and then from there, we'll just be kind of getting back to writing music. But uh, we're, we're excited for the show tomorrow night. So if you're in Nashville or if you feel like traveling, come on out. It should be a lot of fun. All right, man. Thank you guys again for coming and doing this. We'll see, Appreciate you, uh, you, guys. see you next Thank time. Thank you. Thanks to Sweetwater. Thanks for Thanks. having me.